robots took my podcast, man. Welcome to our podcast. I am Jordan. This is Anthony. And on this podcast, we will be talking about genre movies, film in general, all things like that. Just having fun. And I guess this is the maiden voyage of yeah. the podcast to be called The Robots Took My Podcast. So I guess we'll just go ahead and get started. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Land of Doom is the movie uh, we had watched this week to talk about. Um, you we, we challenged movie. ourselves. And this is a yes. movie we've seen before in full disclosure. I feel like you've um, watched this movie more times than I have, though, possibly. I... Way back when I had a movie review site with a friend and a YouTube channel. And on the site, we, we had a written review for this. So yeah. I'm not exactly coming into this blind. I probably have watched this movie more times than anyone should. <laughs> but it's been a while. Yeah. It has been a while. And it's weird. Never... Like when you watch a movie and you haven't seen it for a while, you come to it again, sort of a different experience. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, I, I finally sat through this movie all the way. Usually I pass out. I, I passed out trying to watch this movie before on Prime. And I think I passed out watching it with you even when we were roommates. Um, sorry. Um, but I, <laughs> it's an interesting. Not everybody movie. appreciates Land of Duke, Jordan. It's, it's not your fault. I will say the most positive thing about this movie, first off, I will say it has a positive female lead in it. For a for this kind of movie that's normally very macho driven, Mad Max yes. movie ripoffs are generally very macho. This is sort of a a, a, a Me Too movie in a way. If if there is such a yes. thing as, and it doesn't even pull it off that well, but if there is such a thing as a post apocalyptic Me Too movie, I think this is one of the closer movies that you can get to. But for for those who haven't seen this movie, nothing but spoilers. I don't know if you're going to watch this. We were thinking like post-apocalyptic Mad Max ripoffs. And we yes, were supposed yes. to watch Metal Storm. There's a lot of them. Yeah, there's tons. We could do a whole podcast just on, on post-apocalyptic Mad Max ripoffs. Each yes. week, we could talk about a different movie and still have lots of fun, right? We might have to do a part so, two to this. I watched Road Warrior as well uh, the night after just to compare. Oh. You know, because Road Warrior and the original Mad Max really started a lot of this. And it's almost like the producers out there in the low budget world of both Europe and America were like, all we need is desert and costume. The costumes just have to be leather or S&M and rags. Hey, that, that's all we need. Hey, we can make a Mad Max movie. We can make money. Yeah. We just need some dirt bikes and a desert. Dirt bikes, refitted dirt bikes. Yes, that too. Yes. And refitted okay. um, dune buggies. And, and so Mad Max, I haven't seen Mad Max in a very long time, so forgive me if I'm just way off on this. Isn't it kind of like one of those movies that people, when they think of that movie, they think of the movies afterward, like Rambo. First yes. Blood, right? It's not called yeah. Rambo. It's, it's about John Rambo in the woods, right? Fighting yeah. cops and everybody and soldiers trying to get him. It was only called Rambo but, on television. Uh, yeah, television. and then people think later on of like Rambo 2 and 3. You know what I mean? And Mad right. Max is like that. It's like post-apocalyptic adjacent, right? Right. It's the beginning of the apocalypse. COVID times, kind of. You know what I mean? It's, it's, not till, it, it's not till Road Warrior and Mad Max Beyond Thunderdome where things are more decayed, uh, more decadent, uh, everything, is, and, and more dust and desert of everything. Everything is more laid to waste by that point. You know, so yeah. Mad Max is just the beginning of it, yeah. It's already where the shits hit the fan. Shit's going down. <laughs> yeah, but people think of the Road War. It's just one of those franchises where the first film is not as emblematic of what it's about. Yeah. Because I wonder if it's really the, when we talk about post-apocalyptic Mad Max ripoffs, I haven't gone back and looked at the time frame of these things, but I bet it's really yeah. Road Warrior that kicks this off. That's you know? exactly what I feel like, too. That's why mainly I went back to watch Road Warrior. You know, and this is movie, uh, uh, Land of Doom came out it, it's odd. I looked it up. It came out in America in 1986, and that was the last release. Before that, it was all over Europe and overseas in 1985. Apparently, we, we were the last to get it. Anyway, <laughs> the director, it's... Peter Maris, had a movie before that called Curse of the Red Butterfly, 
that was made in Istanbul, I guess. <laughs> it was a jewel heist movie. <laughs> Curse of the Red Butterfly. It feels like a European movie. Yeah. I also um, have, and of course, what is the plot, basically? The plot is what? Harmony, the female character played by Deborah Renard, comes across Anderson, who's on the run from Slater, the bad guy. The villain. Slater is iconic I, in this own way. I don't know. Yeah. Is it me or is that the plot, basically? <laughs> there, There isn't a plot, so to speak, except for the fact that they're running. Yeah, usually like in post-apocalyptic movies, there's a bad guy. They're trying to stop our heroes. In this movie, they're just running from the bad guy pretty much there's no end goal yeah. i mean anderson does mention some place that they could get to and yeah. no and i'm not going to spoil the end of the movie uh we'll talk about that once we get you know we can try to talk about this chronologically in the beginning of the movie everything's hitting the fan the harmony meets anderson anderson's been wounded and for the rest of the movie he remembers sometimes to be wounded and other yeah. times not oh man is he a Boy, he's a lot of dead weight, too, for this woman. For most of the movie. <laughs> and she is so right. She says that in the beginning. And she is absolutely right that he's going to hold her back and get her in trouble. And that's pretty much... It's a self-fulfilling the, the, prophecy. A self-fulfilling prophecy. Her first instinct about this, this dude was right. She shouldn't have fucking hooked up with him. Or not yeah. hooked up, but hung out with him, gone with him, because he brings her nothing but fucking trouble. That's the lesson that we need to learn from this movie. <laughs> Don't help strangers in the post-apocalyptic world. <laughs> yeah, because he's not just any stranger. The main bad guy in the movie, his sole purpose is to get this guy because Anderson, like, somehow, there's a whole political thing where Anderson was part of the gang or a part of some group that they were, like, working with, and then he... He had a, he wanted to take the group in a different way, different and rebuild society. And Slater wanted to maintain control. Uh, yeah. There's a lot of backstory we thankfully don't get. Um, this movie we don't had have to two sit screenwriters, by the way. That's all I have to say. <laughs> and it it well let's let's go back to the beginning. It begins with what I can only call Planet of the Dinosaurs opening credits. It you have reverse to be Sergio images. Leone. It's yeah, it, uh, good, yeah. Bad, the ugly, uh, pastel, not pastel. What am I talking about? Silhouette ish, uh, painted. Um, a cheap intro of just stills from the movie that you're about to see. They're colored, uh, and then, yeah, it's reverse image, silhouette, whatever it is. And with really bad synth music, as I recall. Yes. But it's kind of like, you're right, it, it's Western Sergio Leone. I, in, I'm glad, inspired yeah. music and the opening title looks like it's made out of clay when they show the actual land of doom title they uh, do they used a practical effect yeah i was yeah. i was i never remembered that and i was just like huh. although wow. i admire it at the same time it's very yeah it's very it's, it's, it's nicely done for, for a it's nicely movie. done for a third grader yeah it looks like a third graders <laughs> project was to make uh you know yeah you did a work. good job a good job, Johnny. If my six-year-old daughter did that, I would be proud of her. This whole movie has that feeling. Uh, an elementary school child made this. It's kind of endearing because it's so inept. It's so bad. It's so cliche. The dialogue is horrible. It's just awful. It's it's the worst canned dialogue you could ever have. It, it's you just have like, to love a movie. You have to love a movie where the uh, the villain calls the good guy Anderson a loser. I mean, I, I, I thought that was hilarious. And maybe Slater's not wrong. Maybe so. Slater isn't wrong. I've, I've watched it this time around. He's a lot of just, dead weight I, for the female heroine, yeah. It's just like, I never thought about that, but you're right. Like, you know, I was watching it this time. I was like, you know, this movie shouldn't have happened. This is one of those movies where somebody should have followed their gut and just the movie shouldn't have happened. She said, uh, can I go with you? you you're going to be dead weight. No, I promise I won't, whatever dialogue. Yeah. And she should have said, nope, bye. And then that should have been the end of the credits. Yeah. Well, she should have said, should have been nice to meet you. I'm sorry. You're going to die here on this rock, unfortunately, I guess. You're going to bleed to death, I guess. So, sorry. <laughs> nice knowing you. I got my own ass to look after. Yeah. On and my way. Around. Yeah, on my, yeah, exactly. Instead, they pal. Instead, goodbye. 
instead he grows on her is all I can fathom. Okay, and now is now is an appropriate time to talk about the really in-depth, depth, the deep and complex relationship that Harmony and Anderson have. Okay. Yeah. These are two people who are horrible actors. No offense to them, but but they are not acting. They work in this movie because the rest of well, the movies are bad. Well, that's a two-way street. I feel like this, I looked it up. Uh, Deborah Renard, who plays Harmony, she went on to a lot of television work. Garrick Dowan, who played Anderson. I don't think he did as much, but I think I think Deborah Renard has acting talent. I She can't, that's a two-way street being in this kind of movie. Uh, we'll blame the director. The director. We'll blame, blame the, director. the director on part of this, yeah. They're not, it's not their fault they're fenced in the bad script. Yeah, yeah. Even Hayden Christensen would have been wooden in this. Or I'll be nice know. and say a weak script. What exactly. script, Jordan? <laughs> Where is the script? <laughs> I looked high and low for some continuity. Some sort of some sort of story. Like I said, but anyway, I here's it up. here's There's Harmony's two deal. writers on this script. <laughs> here's Harmony's deal. And this is where the Me Too aspect comes in. Clearly, this is the post-apocalypse, and clearly times are tough for women in the post-apocalyptic. Absolutely. World. We see that from the opening scene with all the looting of Slater's goons. All the looting and what I what I call PG-13 the rain. rain. There's a lot of PG-13 God. rain. And it happens a lot. It's just like we get it. These marauders are taking over a it's town like and humping. Yeah, it's like yeah, the, it's dry humping. It's it's all clothes on. Luckily, like no contact. Junior yeah. high. Luckily, clearly clothes. no contact going on. At least there's it's some awkward kissing. Yes, yeah. it's a junior high dance in terms of of movie uh, post apocalypse rape. This is this yeah. is literally a PG. Is this a, this isn't a rated R movie, is it? I think it is. Yeah. How? I think it, Does Anderson drop an f bomb? I don't. There was. I mean, other than other than the above the clothes rape. Good. And you don't even dwell on the rape. It's not like a You're 70s movie. Not so movie. tough now, you know. Yeah. You're not so <clears throat> yeah. tough now, uh, Slater, motherfucker. You and your goons. <laughs> Ass hole. <laughs> no, there's not even that. Okay. So anyway, but Harmony has issues. The girl needs a therapist. She has had a traumatic past. I and nobody begrudges her that. Oh, absolutely. But, she brings it up every five minutes a in the worst way. Her. And I, I blame the dialogue. I blame the dialogue because it's like literally, don't touch me. And, and Anderson's yeah. always trying to kind of put a hand on her shoulder. Clearly, she, the dialogue is written by an idiot male. <laughs> yes. And, he, and, and she's like, don't touch me. He's like, oh, oh, oh. well, every man I've ever met has tried to rape me. I mean, that's yeah, her she, thing. She states it. Uh, it the, officially, so it's not rated. No rating. No rating. Nobody bothered watching this to rate it. The MPAA didn't even watch this. They said, whatever. <laughs> that, that's exactly what happens when that situation, from what I know on, about movies, is that, yeah, when a movie's not rated, that means the MPAA did not look at it. And that's what happens, too, when the MPAA, when you don't agree with the MPAA on anything, they, they agree. They're like, well, you can have no rating at all. Motherfucker. Well, this is a foreign release, so I don't know how that, that might have something to do with it. it. Uh, they didn't have time run it through the MPAA, but that just limits its release more, especially back then, because people assume it's an X-rated movie back back in, back then in the 80s when it's released. That's what they're going to assume is that it's an X-rated movie, so they may not look at it. So it has yeah. a limited release because of that. I can guarantee you Land of Doom had a limited release that came from Europe a lot of times, or overseas, or in the Middle East. They, they were done. And the whole deal with Harmony, and, and it's just... The dialogue is just so horrible. The writing is so bad that they don't take that moment. That's well, what I mean. The poor yeah. actress has to read this awful dialogue. That's not her. Everyone fault. I've ever met has tried to rape me. And I mean, I think that's she's a obvious. good actress, actually. That's a, on, that's a given. There's a better way of saying that. So it's not what she's saying. It's like how. And the fact mm -hmm. that she keeps saying that, she says that multiple times in the movies. Don't rape, or not don't rape me, but I mean, you know. Yeah. Like she gives this speech, and Anderson keeps trying to touch her, or accidentally. It makes her them. look. It makes her look bitchy when it, it's not necessary, because she really. We should understand what she's going through. She's a woman in a post-apocalypse. Look at what we yeah. see what women go through. She is not yeah. a mean woman at all. She's a good person being violated constantly by. Men. And she's trying to be tough. 
Yeah. And she's, and yet they make her look kind of mean because of that. It's like, no, that's not yeah. right. Come on. She's trying to live in a man's world. I have to bring and up Anderson, the biggest thing about this movie is this movie is connected to the Star Wars universe. We because have Jawas. Of Jawas. <laughs> in this funny. movie. There somehow. are straight up there are straight up Jawas. They're not even they're they're wearing the same robe. robe. They just show up. They don't say what they are. They just show up. Well, Jordan, a lot well, of people don't are... know this, but this was filmed using some of the same sets as, as Turkish Star Wars and some so of the same costumes. Is... <laughs> so this is probably it was, yeah. This is Turkish it's... Mad Max is what it it's is. In a that's desert. what we're watching. I mean, it's it's on Tatooine somewhere, basically. That that's what that that's what that means. That's where this place is land of doom. If you want to be able to make it really interesting from a fan conspiracy theory, but it doesn't make it a better movie, unfortunately. No, no, no. But I mean, Harmony's plight is not. And and Henderson, Henderson. Well, let's just call him Henderson because he's always trying and to grab Christian a piece. Henderson. <laughs> he was trying to. He, he touches her a lot, and this time I was watching yeah. it. I was like, yeah, I kind of get it. There's a lot of like slips and catches. Says, Lay off Henderson. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I mean, that's it, isn't it? That's the whole movie. That's half the movie is Anderson trying to touch her. And yeah. then she says, don't touch me. And then literally the same scene, the same scene happens over and over again. They see the marauders on, the, on their, their bikes and they have these like horrible pieces of flair, you know, made in like a metal yeah. shop class, all glued to their their... I, like these poor actors, how do you, how do you ride your bike in the desert with a big old dangerous metal or maybe cardboard? Um, <laughs> it looks like it made it was some of it looked like painted wood. Yeah, maybe it was probably wood, but it's supposed to be metal. But I mean, that's dangerous. It's trained to look like metal. See through that, and and they're oh, just little Yamaha dirt bikes. Yeah, and then this, they just the same scene keeps happening. They just keep running away. I feel bad for the stunt people in movies like this a lot of times. You know, Dude, you know somebody died. You know somebody <laughs> died or was injured. I think one of the actors is dead now, but I can't remember, and I don't know if it was something tragic, but it, but I thought that I saw something like that on IMDb, somebody alluding to that. And then, and another thing, I can't find who played Slater. I can't find the actor's name. Did you find it? Yeah, I think it was on the IMDb. Like Slater. I looked him up. Although he um, looks like somebody they found in a gym, you know, with blow dried blonde hair and a modified S and M mask. He looks. Make, he looks for like a speech impediment as well. Yeah, yeah. He looks like uh, if Dennis Hoffman, Dennis Hoffman, <laughs> <laughs> Dustin if Hoffman. Um, Dustin Dennis Hoffman, Hoffman. <laughs> <laughs> Dennis Hoffman was a great. He just made uh, up a new, new York film actor. Loved him on the stage. <laughs> But no, he's like Dustin. He looks like Dustin Hoffman with the with the bad leather mask, and he talks with a speech impediment. Like that's being generous, I think. You know, honestly, you know. Clip here. We'll put in a clip here of yeah. the scene with one of the one of the scenes. There's so many repetitive scenes. One of the scenes where Anderson's called in front of Slater and his goons. <laughs> Brave man, Slater, with all your goons around you, but you don't have the guts to do your own dirty work. The trouble with you, Anderson, is you live in the past. You're trying to rebuild the old world. But what you fail to realize is the same people who made the old world also destroyed it. No. The only way is to win. The strong will survive, Anderson. And I'm a winner. You're a loser. You know what, Anderson? Your problem is, I mean, it's, it's distracting. I'm not trying to make fun of somebody who legitimately has a speech impediment. I don't think he is. I think it's that mask, honestly. I think it's the mask that makes it's him talk like around him. his mouth. Yeah. He sounds like and, Brian James in an s and mask. I know that's really bizarre reference, but really far out reference. Brian um, James talked like this. So if Brian James had a speech impediment, he'd talk like this, you know. <laughs> I got to Google Brian James now. Brian James from Blade Runner, you know, like, time to die. Oh, you know? that guy. Okay, yeah. <laughs> Wake up. Okay. Time to die. Okay, so Slater has this glove. Okay, and there's so much S&M gear. If there was ever... My got some commentary back, back there. 
Sorry, yes, my um, wife's adding commentary in the background. So Agra for Men in Black. Must, so that sounded like anyway. Sorry. Uh, whenever they were filming this, that whatever Turkish S and M gear shop was just down the road must must have yeah. just had a field day because literally this is S and M gear. Even for most post apocalyptic movies, but this is yeah. just straight up S and M gear that everyone's wearing. And there's a point where there's like a kind of a Danny DeVito bad mm -hmm. guy that mm -hmm. it's hilarious. She just kicks him oh, in the nuts yeah. and throws him over a cliff. That's he just right. comes out of nowhere. I remember that part. Yes. It, See, like, like Mad Max, Mad or Road, all the Mad Max movies when they did it, they did it, they did it selectively, you know, and they did it with style more, but they also added their own touch every time, which meant a piece yeah. of hard gear or something like that. Something that makes it look more post-apocalyptic but these are yeah they're it's just sometimes it's just straight out of it it's either, either rags or it's just straight out from an s m shop with spikes and studs and everything down to the gloves down to the leather pants down to the the masks down to the the, the straps <laughs> i mean harmony is wearing some very unflattering khaki pants with an unnecessary Black That's triangle the on the thing back too. Yeah, kind of looks like a thong. I don't know what does they were this, going with that. Does this movie? Like, that's the odd. That's the odd double-edged sword about this movie. It's like, does this movie love women or hate women? <laughs> you know, <laughs> does I it respect know. women or disrespect women? <laughs> okay, but yeah, they let's, make let's, her look and you know they make her look kind of unflattering compared to the men get to wear. <laughs> Oh, the yes well, maybe that's, that's flattering. That's the respect <laughs> aspect. That's why it's kind of a, like a, a warm, <laughs> good-natured movie. I'm like, just it's, confused it's as a male right watching place. this now, Anthony. That's all. Yeah, um, there's no women. There's no women <laughs> except for Slater's like girls that are all very average-looking women that are kind of. They dressed. all look like cons women from Star Trek. Yeah, they look like, like cons SM women. With but harmonies from you an know. SM shop, maybe. Yeah, Harmony's just dressed like she's going on a hike. You know what I mean? She's dressed she's, like she came from the Gap in 1983. You know, or yeah. 1984, or whenever they shot the movie, I guess it was 1984, maybe since it came out. In That's when the apocalypse happened, right as she was walking outside the Gap. I was like, oh shit. Yeah. yeah. And then she's ten minutes later, weird, she's got that weird solid gold leather dancer strapped on the butt area for no reason at all. But I'm no, not, she I, was a tough female character. I, I felt like. Well, she was She's prime, on the poster, I, I noticed. The script is, keeps telling us that she is a tough female character. She does the get odd thing is her sidekick is not on the poster, though. All the posters you see. Really oh, we can, let's talk about the posters at the end because there are the posters multiple posters. Cool, though. <laughs> there are multiple posters on this, but I want to stay on track. Let's get through the story because they meet, they meet a guy and his dog. Okay, it's I think Roland and oh, and that's right, yeah, Guinevere, right, and that yeah. goes back to like Arthurian legends and, and I mean, mid, you know, medieval stuff. Yeah, and I'm just like, this guy. That guy is also the Deus Ex Machina, right? He he saves them every ten minutes. That's the thing. That's what I mean. He's just yeah, some he, dude he comes in at the end of the movie for no reason at all, like the hand just, of God. The hand of God every time they need saving. Not once, Jordan. Not once. No. He saves them like multiple fucking times, if, I, if I'm remembering. Right? Sorry, yes, he does. He doesn't just come in at the end. You're right. But it's like a day of ex mocking that's supposed to happen one time, I think. It shouldn't happen like four times. No. And he has this puppy, and the puppy's cute. But this dude is, is just like he's got a, a lute or a lyre or one of those instruments. Yeah. And a bicycle, and then yeah. a flamethrower later. But he he's kind of like he's kind of like Balky off Perfect Strangers. He's kind of like Bronson Pitchett. Yeah. He is not like a dude that belongs. He wandered in from another movie. Is what happened. You Bronson know? Pinchot he, power without Bronson Pinchot not. actually being there. Bronson Pinchot projecting himself into this movie. You know, astral projecting himself. I'm sorry, I know that, Steve. The man, the man. Well, maybe he was doing his best Bronson Pinchot impression. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Uh, there's nothing really Bronson Pinchot about this dude, other than the fact that he is just some fucking dude who just wanders in from I don't know where and doesn't belong in this movie. Yeah, uh, but saves the I, it's day. Like he like, came from a. It's almost like he came from a Turkish sitcom. That's maybe that's it. <clears throat> he was Turkey's. 
he was like Turkey's like number one sitcom actor. The guy, only the uncle that walks in the door, you know, with, to a laugh track and a clap, you know, and applause, you know, that kind of and guy. Then you know. Trips over the Ottoman, no pun yeah, intended. Exactly. But 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 survives because he's like, you know, he'd be, yeah, he's like Jack Tripper, yeah, in, in Turkey. Yeah. Though. But yeah, he does not belong in this movie and with his puppy. And no, luckily, where did he come from? Luckily, the he puppy came from is from another movie. Okay. Or he came from a Turkish action film, you know, basically. That's another thing, you know. Yeah, over the hill, there's another Turkish action film going on. He wandered so into anyway, a tomb, basically. Harmony and Anderson are pretty inept at fighting off Tur- uh, Slater's goons. They get, ca- they get captured, but yeah. Roland doesn't. Roland is way better at surviving in the post-apocalypse than they are. Wait, him Roland. and his oh, that's the name. Of the, oh, yeah, that's the name of the guy rolling. I, I think it's Roland. But this guy's can't be. It's just ridiculous. It's, it's just a wacky mismatch of of characters. I realized but, that when I had to go back and watch the. Uh, I had to go back before the ending because I couldn't remember what happened before that when I watched the first night. I couldn't remember, so I went back and and I realized, yeah, that guy just basically comes in out of nowhere and saves the day. And I and it, I, I was it was just laughable. It's like what oh. Well, they'll remember trying him to, for the sequel. <laughs> trying to bring in some fantasy element into this. That's why it's so European. It's like when Europeans try yeah. to make a post-apocalyptic movie. And there are many Italian uh, post-apocalyptic movies and sword and sandal movies that just yeah. do this better. The Italians get the post-apocalypse. This is not, this is from somebody who was trying to make a post-apocalyptic movie. It's like, let's check the boxes. We need people in, in uh, S&M gear. We need a desert. We need motorcycles. Yeah. There we go. We need a villain. And so they get captured by um, finally. And, and, and Slater has this like number two who, who just has the weirdest accent. And everyone's dubbed or it's, it's a dubbed movie. And it's. That sounds they, like the they, actors look like they're from all over the place. They have two American leads and then one American villain. Though. And then, yeah. I, of course, I don't think the American villain is dubbed at all. I think. He's an American villain. He's an American actor. Guys, are villain. I don't know. <clears throat> I, you know, it's it, the thing about it is maybe that I don't know. Yeah, the, if he's not dubbed, it's either they got someone with a speech impediment, or they recorded him there, and probably the outdoor stuff. I don't know if they could have yeah. mic that up. But I maybe suspect, was, yeah, a lot of the other production. actors or extras are, are locals. They're either from Europe or they're they're in Turkey where they shot it. And it's one of those movies, whenever you meet, it, it's like accents the movie. Like somebody will have a Finnish accent. One of the bad guys will have a Finnish accent. Another guy will have a Turkish accent. I mean, like, yeah. and then you've got Americans, and everyone just has random accents. And then they, the of weird thing they, I'll say, too, about the plot, I feel like it could have been almost better with the locations and what they had, you know, if they had, if they had finessed it a little better. If they had a, a real story, Jordan, to tell <laughs> yeah. They actually had dialogue. It was yeah. literally. I wouldn't have I had the villain. I love this I movie. movie. I, I, I mean, I'm, I'm just bitching about it, but it's so inept. There's, there's something endearing about it. And I don't know what that is. It's one of those so bad. It's, it it's, is a fascinating it's hard mess, to, though. It's a fascinating mess, and its heart is in the right place. I don't know if that makes it watchable. Yeah. It is so bad that you could laugh at it because Slater has this glove. Right now, oh, I, I love that glove. <laughs> this fucking glove looks like something I made for, like, like a Freddy Krueger glove. I would have tried to make made uh, when I was like a kid for Halloween. Before you added the it's, blades, though. Exactly. <clears throat> it is bad, and it makes this can crushing noise. It, it, <laughs> you know, whenever it like closes, like, like literally, just a, just an insert of a can crush. And he's, I mean, he's just, he looks like he belongs in an yeah. 80s music video, which is good because that is what the genre is all about. Well, he's allow me most... just one second since I'm crushing this can right now. <laughs> the only way is to win, Anderson. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> <laughs> only the frogs are five, Anderson. That's what it was. Ah, dang it. I messed it up. Ah. Only the strong survive, Anderson. That was awesome. That sounded better than the movie, though. Wow. <laughs> it just needed that sound effect. That's all it would have required. That's all. If I was directing it, I wouldn't have allowed him to talk, man. I would have kept him silent and deadly. You know what I mean? Just 
he moves his fingers at people to do things. You know what I mean? That's the way you do it if you have a low budget like that with actors. Like, like there's that. just no rhyme or reason. Yeah. To if any actors of actors don't have range, man, then you you better do something with that. <laughs> and then, yeah, they get captured by Slater. Then they escape. It's not important. We don't need to go through details. But basically, after they Roland is that I keep calling him Roland. That's probably not even his name. Someone's going to be like, his name was actually Roland. We're like, okay, fine. It was he saves him in the end, and he's got this homemade uh, flamethrower and saves the day and whatever. And then we get to the 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 climax, the end of the movie, and then there's Jawas. Okay, the Jawas help them escape. These are good Jawas. That's right. Not, the Jawas. I mean, they are the Jawas, though. They collect they're straight up Jawas, Jawas dude. Oh, they're not even kind of Jawas. No, they're not they full, are 30 percent Jawas. Can you imagine if they had had Land of Doom action figures back then? They would have got sued. Like I'm Kenner surprised. Lucasfilm. I'm surprised. They're, maybe that's why this movie never really blew up. I mean, maybe they got their ass sued off or straight up having Jawas. Orland. Oh, I didn't His think name was that. Orland. Oh, Everyone yeah. forgive me. His name was Orland. The, okay, the Deus Ex Machina, Hand of God guy. Orland. With the flamethrower and a I'm sorry, and I'm using bicycle. screenwriting terms here by Robert McKee again. You're just talking way above all our heads, Jordan. Stop. Um, I'm no, sorry. <laughs> forgive me, sons. Yeah. <laughs> Look it up on Google. <laughs> yeah, then they escape. And then this movie does. This movie has giant brass balls, Jordan. It does in that direction. Giant in fucking some brass some balls. At the end, at the end, okay. they're like, uh, Orland, you need to come with us. And he's like, no, I've got to go do some shit. I don't know. Bye. See ya. Thanks. Like, oh, yeah, he runs off farewell. with the Jawas, right? He runs off with the Jawas. And this comes after, like, Orland Spoilers. was in the movie at a very pivotal point. But they've only known this guy probably 30 minutes. Yeah, but he did save their life about three times in in this in, in that thirty minutes. <laughs> so I understand yeah. the teary farewell. In the past, I thought that that was a bit rushed, but now that I've seen the he, he saved their ass so many times, it's like yeah. yeah. Then the most unbelievable thing, fucking in the whole movie, happens. Anderson and Harmony kiss. That's right. Like what? 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 Where did uh, this come from? Yeah. Like I said, he grew on her somehow. <sighs> like mold on cheese. Like mold on cheese. Like mold this on movie bread. literally is in real time. There like is the no stink on a shoe. Like you know, yeah. like the uh, uh like the like the like the green moss on a rock. I'm sorry, I'll stop. Oh no, you keep going. That's that's as much chemistry as these two people have. Uh, yeah, because you know? you're right. It comes out of nowhere. Uh, it, it's she's like, "Don't touch me! Don't touch me!" All right, kiss. I was like, I, the the my inner female was watching that, going, "Oh, girl, you could do way better." You know, uh-uh, uh-uh baby, quit making uh-uh. the same mistakes. That's uh-uh, your problem. Girl, get away from there. Uh-uh. That is Don't your problem. There. That's why you no, can't be a good man. And then you've got Harmony's friends, like, "Oh, you." <laughs> You're still with Anderson after he's almost gotten you killed 50 times? Girl, what is your yeah. problem? Girl, you, Anderson is dead weight to you. You know, he's like the drummer when you're a stripper. <laughs> I wish this movie was that interesting. That would be a better post-apocalyptic movie. But then they kissed and you're just like, where did this come from? There's nothing uh, – Anderson, there's nothing. nothing interesting about Anderson either. He's a lame no. white guy. He's a lame white guy. He's He has – terrible dialogue he's not really good at fighting or anything no he, he's i mean he's injured that's another oh. thing and i noticed the back of of his um his like vest he wears has three yeah. bullet holes in it Go, I'd rather be, the way he dresses i would rather be dressed like slater yeah i said it you know by comparison Man. well that's just kind of more <laughs> your thing jordan maybe oh, we'll I talk about his... that in another podcast <laughs> <laughs> they look like yeah they look like they just walked out the gap and then somebody threw some blood and some dirt on their clothes like he's wearing a members only jacket kind of thing he, everyone he just knows. wandered into this movie from somewhere else it's it's yeah. baffling then they kiss and then the, they do the one damn thing that you should never fucking do it and 
and Roland runs off. He runs off. And then he sees, I shit you not. I shit you not. If I hadn't seen this, I wouldn't believe I wouldn't believe it. Only Slater's glove come over this ridge. Now, oh, how did right. Slater? The Slater was all glove. beat up and burned. I don't know. I don't recall what happened to him, but he just his glove. Slater climbed up a, a, a tall, steep, rocky mountain. Yeah. And just yeah. on the peak of this mountain, <laughs> like he's climbing over now. Now, all his other people have been stopped by this big, big explosion. Maybe Orlin saved him somehow. Orlin probably saved everybody. That's a good fan theory. Maybe it's just Orlin like, is the Jar Jar of this movie, after all. Yeah. <laughs> he's all right. He is. If he is the Jar Jar of this fucking movie. <laughs> <laughs> so I've thought of that. He's totally Jar Jar. And then over the voiceover, you hear only the strong survive, 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 survive. survive. <laughs> no, no, I just made that up. But I wish that was no. That you might as a, well. That would have been the icing on the cake. <laughs> because what they do say is so fucking stupid. Then Ro- Orland runs would have been back like down. Like a Blade Runner esque, you know. It's too bad she won't live. But then again, who does? Who does? <laughs> and, then, and then, luckily, the puppy's okay. So everybody who was worried about the puppy, this thank whole God, moment, I was so Guinevere, The Jawas yeah. were taking care of the puppy. Thank goodness. Yeah, I was worried, but the puppy's all right. Then they run back. He runs back to them. So five minutes before, he's like, "I've got to go." do my own thing and then he runs back he's like slater's back and then i swear to god like you just want to slap anderson because first he kissed harmony yeah out of nowhere and then now he says out on anderson here we i gotta blame somebody here we go again and like oh my fucking god you know what i'm wrong i was wrong in saying orlin is the jar jar of this movie that was wrong i mean i take that back anderson is the jar jar of this movie <laughs> Anderson is the jar. <laughs> Good fucking He's, god if there's any dead weight jar jar was dead weight anderson is jar jar anderson is ugh, ugh. <laughs> what a revelation <laughs> don't touch me me so sorry <laughs> Why see you no like people touching you? <laughs> you a Slater, Misa Anderson. Misa not like a you. You so would not be so tough without your goons around you, Slater. That's where you're wrong, but, Anderson. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and he lives in the past, by the way, Anderson. That's his he problem. D- he does he live in the past. past. Clearly, he's too nostalgic about everything. You know, his old way. high school days. What did Slater when he was mean a, when he said that to him? I'm sorry. No, it was, it was like, Anderson, you're just living your old high school of victories on the football field. You need to, you need to grow really? up and realize. Well, Anderson wants <laughs> to, like, plant crops and do all the things that you do to rebuild society. Did Slater mean well by saying that? Not rape him? women. I think <laughs> Slater has a point. It's the post-apocalypse. You got you to gotta do what you got to do to survive, which means... Slater can't look weak in front of all his men. Only so he can't be survive. He can't hey. be punked out by Anderson. This is like a, this is like this. This could be easily translated into like an urban environment with drug dealers. Yeah. Slater can't be punked out. Like there are elements to the story that are interesting that were not developed because they're too busy. Like saying, "Here we go again," and here's my puppy. Really, yeah. I mean, they're doing terrible things. But there is that idea. That's the whole reason why, why Slater wants Anderson is because Anderson fucking scarred his face and made him look weak in front of his men. And if he doesn't get Anderson, then the second in command who is trying to take over is going to realize that Slater's weak. So there's a lot on the line for Slater. You know, this we got is not a nice finger chopping action or was like, didn't we? Yeah, I thought. Yeah, he did get his fingers chopped off in that fight. Yeah, that was like. That was pretty effed up, you know. That was pretty. But but I mean, the second in command, I just have done uh, uh, sunburned. Like, get this guy some seriously. Get this guy. And some once sunburned. again, for the for the podcast listeners out there who are, who are never who have never seen this movie or may never see this movie, for good reason. The the villain looks like he came from a uh, an, an exercise bodybuilding video in the eighties, but they just grabbed him from that video and put an S and M modified S and M mask over him. With studs, you just see the Slater workouts. Like, all right, the bad you guys guy. are a bunch of losers. I'm a winner. You're a loser. All right, read now, the dialogue. Action. <laughs> all right, people, move up. <laughs> Only the strong survive. 
All right. <laughs> Only the strong could get these abs. Wait, read it again. It didn't sound right. <laughs> but anyway, I, I just want to say a couple of things before I think we wrap up here because I think we've talked this into the ground. Um, oh, by the way, the music. You mentioned the music. The music, bring. yes. It sounds dated. It sounds like either it was library music from 1979, which would, would have sounded dated by 1985. But it sounds dated. It sounds like it's about six years earlier, which would have sounded dated back then. Yeah, it sounds like TV music. I thought the same thing. It sounds yeah. like canned music, and it kicks in at the wrong time. They have two themes or three themes that they keep playing. and They, they would have got away them. with more with one electric guitar and a synthesizer, probably. Yeah, there was this was... This was music they bought, and they and they don't sync it up right. It'll just be like nothing happened, like people yeah. punching each other. And then in the middle of a scene, the main theme is like da 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 da, da you know. And we're just like, whoa, yeah. this is like not the right music. A, like it belongs in Cannonball Run, maybe. Exactly, or an episode of the A Team is what it sounds like. It sounds like yeah. a can TV yeah, or a Steven, any Stephen J. Canell TV show, like Riptide or yeah. That yeah, awesome. that's what we're looking at. But um, doesn't I want to talk about apocalypse. No, it, none of it sinks. Uh, obviously, again, the third grade movie here. It, it doesn't. <laughs> it's, the music is not used well. It doesn't fit. It's like, well, we have this song. It kind of fits. Yeah. Look, mom, Let's, I made a Mad Max movie. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh dear, that's that's sweet. But uh, don't you think that Di Harmony's dialogue is a little contrived? Yeah. No. No. no, I think it's great. <laughs> I put a puppy I think it's in great. It. Harmony's tough. <laughs> okay, so then you look at the multiple posters. There's the, the original movie poster, which I don't know which is the original. I think it's the one that kind of has a blonde chick. Looks like yeah. Harmony. I would, I would love to own one. Yeah. yeah. And then the guy with the, the flamethrower is not Roland or Orland. He's, you know, looks like one of Slater's goons. Slater's fingers are cut off, but they're somehow like metal. The, the glove is, I don't know. That Isn't looks he okay. aiming the glove out, kind of Freddy style almost? Or, yeah, you know, yeah. Like... All versions of the poster have Slater. And this is the most, this is the most like the movie. Except that's yeah. not what Harmony looks like. Harmony's not dressed herself. And that's what that movie should have been, is her dressed in like a mini skirt and just a leather halter top. That's instead of fully going yeah. on a hike um or so that is the most and it says land of doom a 21st you know what i i would have made her I would have made her look more combative if, if i were to dress her you know i would have made her look more sarah connor like maybe or something mm -hmm. I mean, just ready for combat kind of more yeah but just it says a 20 military gear anyway the, the tagline on the poster is a 21st century mad land like come on dude well isn't that clever that's mad max the Last Warrior Woman, a Dark Raider of Death. The battle for the survival begins at the end of the earth. Like, that's just a bunch of words put together. Oh, the end of the earth. They were early flat earthers. They were. What got <laughs> me, what got me was the VHS title. That's, I didn't even know about the original poster, but if you look up the VHS title, I, th I think yeah. it is. I could be wrong. Maybe this is actually the poster. It has a whole different movie. It's got Slater with a way cooler mask. He's got a leather studded glove and 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 an arm thing. And it's got like a red Sonia chick. And his glove is like has claws on it and a crossbow. And then there's just it looks like it just looks like a different movie, man. And then there's a chick on a motorcycle that never happens. This movie never, I would love to have seen. This they got to sell think, VHS, man. They got to sell VHS. And what I said way back when was like, the, you see Slater's glove reaching out and for your wallet, and it worked. Not only back <laughs> then did I read the fucking VHS. That's great, actually. Yeah, that's clever. But I also streamed it again and paid Amazon some more money to watch this. And so <laughs> it looked great in HD. I have to say, great HD. Copy oh yeah, there on Amazon. I've no, never it, seen Landon look, look. I mean, I saw, I saw pieces of it from the version you had, which is just VHS, clearly. But yeah, it was uh, amazing. Yeah. yeah, this is the best it's it's looked. I don't know if that's a good thing. 
<laughs> but it looks like an oh, it looks like there was a, an Italian release, Mad Force. They called it. The That's Fuerza right. del Mad Futuro. Mm, nice. That must be a Spanish version. Axiom. It doesn't sound like Mad Max at all. Land of Land Doom really isn't really a great title, I guess, when you think about it for a post-apocalyptic movie. It's kind of weak, I guess. Huh? You know? It doesn't explain what's happening. Land of Mad Doom! <laughs> I mean, it is a land of doom, and I guess there's a lot of doom happening. It's a land of doom. There's a lot of doom happening. It should, it should just be right here. Oh, it's just a, it's just a, a land of of re repeat sequences, bad pieces of flair attached to uh, motorcycles and psychological uh, trauma on on harmony. I'll tell you the odd thing too. When I was first watching this, I I started to think, as I was drinking my beer and lost in the fog, where was this movie shot? Turkey? Ah, let me look it up. And sure enough, it was Turkey. And it, what, what gave it away was the cities. You see these cave dwellings in the rocks. Those are primarily in Turkey. And you see that in the background a lot. They look great. They look like very, you know, that's what they, that's what, they borrowed that for Planet of the Apes, the original Planet of the Apes. The yeah. production design for the Ape City is, is like that. That's where they borrowed it from. That was a giveaway too, but it was filmed in Turkey mostly. All the outdoor scenes at least, all the desert is in Turkey. And and the you, better you film should have done more shot that. There. Yeah, it looks great, especially you realize how great the location is. But yeah, they could have done more with that. They should just started from the beginning. There were some ideas here, but uh, that being said, what what do you what kind of rating do you give this sword? Maybe out of out of ten, what what do you what do you rate this film? Can I give it a seven because it's it's a very interesting movie still. <laughs> it's an interesting mess. <laughs> interesting mess that's even that, with its weird flaws way. and disturbing you know uh raping and pillaging in the beginning of the movie <laughs> it's weird it's weird for a post -apoc there's a lot of weird yeah. post-apocalyptic movies out there but i guess it's very in biblical and roman-esque you know ancient roman-esque yeah there's like a lot of fantasy elements but not i can't not tell if this movie wants to be mad max or star wars though yeah it's trying to be something, and it is that something, but I'm not sure if I like that something. Yeah. I'm going to have my 15th viewing of this movie. <laughs> okay. It's been a long time. Wow, that's dedicated. I think you are right in about 7 out of 10 as far as if you like bad 80s post-apocalyptic movies. And Which I do a like bad movies. Puzzle yes. over 80s, 80s post puzzle over this the more the merrier, yes. And there's a lot of stuff we didn't talk about or spoil. There's a, there's a, oh, yeah. a big scene, cannibals. We might there's, be talking about awesome. another post apocalyptic movie next podcast, hopefully. Uh, the whole podcast yeah. is about uh, post apocalyptic movies, Jordan. That's all we talked about. Yes, I'm sorry. Yes, honey, I am. But um, we will find time to talk about Metal Storm another day. We were going to talk about. Both of them, mm -hmm. but instead we did a we'll have to very edit that if it changes, but yeah, absolutely. Very in-depth. Yeah. Today we're talking about Land of Doom and Metal <laughs> Storm. <laughs> I'll go through your podcast. I don't even care. Uh -oh. Okay, you can have, you can have to edit me out all through your podcast. I don't even oh, care. Oh boy. She just talked in the background. Jordan's in trouble. She's got you got your own little harmony at home. <laughs> you're, you're Anderson's the That's right. I'm married to Harmony. <laughs> I'm Anderson no, and the Harmony. The, the later <laughs> years. The Anderson and Harmony, the later years. Dan, dan, dan. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Jordan, do you have any closing thoughts? Uh, this is a fun movie. I give I Land of Doom a, yes, a seven. It's an interesting mess. Uh, I will give it props. I will say it's a it's the beautiful part and positive thing of this movie is is it, it, the female character is very strong in this movie. I will give it that. She is a tough female. I'll give it that. It has that going for it. Positive. There is, there is I'll one give it thing. the positive. I like and where that. there's that, there's life. No. <laughs> I've learned a lot about. I've learned a lot from this movie. I learned a lot about. And what, what did I learn from Land of Women Doom? struggle in the post apocalypse. Yes. If you're a woman you. in the post apocalypse, you really shouldn't trust any men at all at that point. Basically. Babies, you're better off alone. 
<laughs> ladies. My wife just had a child. Yes, ladies. Um, ladies, you don't trust anyone marriage. in the post box. Yeah. And don't go for an You don't man. need an Anderson. So, exactly. all right, on that, we'll wrap up. <laughs> all right, this is Jordan and Anthony and our podcast entitled. Yes. And next time we'll be talking about something else. And then next time, and we'll be talking about another film at length. Uh, this is <laughs> yeah, a fun yeah. movie. I loved it. And this is one of my favorites. Yes. Any tonight. closing thoughts for you, Anthony, on Land of Doom, having seen it the 15th time? I just have a ton of notes that I noticed this time that we don't have to go into, but there was like a scene that they ripped completely out of Romancing the Stone. There's like, it, this movie is so derivative. It was made at the same time. Yeah. Maybe they went to the theater and went, oh. What's for some mean? reason, I like it. For some weird reason, I like this movie. And I think it's fun. I think it's stupid. But it's mostly a mystery. As a Star Wars nerd, too, uh, the Jawas in there really does add a new level to it. But Lucas has said that Land of Doom is not in the Star Wars film universe, but he did not say it wasn't in the book universe. This could be canon with the books. So it could I be know. in the legend canon, yes. <laughs> All right. Good talking to you about movies, Jordan. Everybody, thanks you, for Andy. listening. Land of Doom, watch it or don't. Land of Doom or die. Don't touch me. Ah, your world is over. And now a word from our sponsor. Hi, I'm Flater. You might remember me from Land of Doom. And I have a question for you. Are you still sleeping on that old mattress? Well, you're living in the past, and you're a loser. I'm a winner, because I sleep on a brand new adjustable memory coil California King, now on sale at Slater's Land of Mattresses. Or how about a luxury queen for the price of a twin? Or a custom cherrywood bedroom set for 20% off? And we even have race car beds for the kitties. Come on down to Slater's Land of Mattresses. Our prices are so low that we crush the competition. Only the strong can survive these savings. And if you bring me Anderson, I will give you 10% off of your first purchase. Slater's Land of Mattresses. Take the Highway 18 exit to Central and Tidwell. Take a right or the cave with the motorcycles parked out front. And if you come to a pile of burning cars, you've gone too far. The old world might be over, but that doesn't mean that you can't sleep the sleep of angels. Slater's Land of Mattresses. Visit our website at www.slaterslandofmattresses.com or follow me on Twitter at Slater, winner not loser, 22. That's Slater's Land of Mattresses. All trailers, clips, music, or any other copyrighted material are used sparingly, edited from their original forms, and used for the purposes of criticism, discussion, commentary, and education about these fine films.